Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. We got the real jam going down. Well, let's just get us started with the Clippers. Just everything that they have going on. So I think the first thing that has to be addressed is Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly. Um, What's the first thing that you think of? Uh, uh, Pat Beverly? Yeah. Uh, Honestly, I I think it's just wild antics. Like Patrick Beverly, like a guy who kind of like he got, he started off real solid. He was a grinder. He he really worked his way to be into the league. I know him personally, like from Russia. I know a lot of the, his background. Um, so he was he, he definitely de- deserved to be where he at. At the same time, I think he the same thing that made him good. Just the same thing that's pretty much making him bad. So you know, like I think he definitely has the ability to help help a team, but. I mean, I think he has just so much other things going on that basketball is in his top priority. And I think that's important to note because with the Clippers losing their series, basketball had to be a top priority. So to see Patrick Beverly not live up to um, the standard that they should have set definitely cost in that series. Uh, what do you think about Twitter fingers? especially Paul George and Damian Lillard and just seeing how they were joking off um, and just kind of going at each other in the regular season and then how that carried out into postseason. I think it's good for basketball. I think they, I think it's, it raises the level. I think that's about time. They all, they all have status as far as money, but one of the things that's going into the future of basketball is uh, the lack of comp- competitiveness within the young guys. So at least they're displaying that. And I think a lot of these guys need to be a lot more prideful when speaking about, you know, how they feel about their opponent. You know, there's no need to go ahead and be friends. Like, let it be known. I'm out here trying to torch you. You know, yeah, you can. There's ways to be respectful. If you up twenty and you don't want to shoot anymore, but outside of that, and you, if you were talking, you talking trash, then you know, let it be known. So, I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I think they both have valid points. I think, you know, and at the same time, they both have like real similar careers as well. But then Damian Lillard and Paul George, where they can be looked up as in some way as overachievers in some way to a certain amount of fans they can be looked at as you know underachievers so but I think that it's good that they both shown that they're competitive for sure but I also think sometimes some players look like they're just completely not equipped to handle the comments handle anything outside of basketball because Paul George was saying that he did struggle with mental health and that it did um, affect his performance on the court. So do you think that for some players you have to stay out the comments and just play basketball? I definitely think that a lot of guys have been engaged in too much in social media. Um, I mean, it just takes away from your focus. You know, like there's no other way to put it. Like when you just have that as your main source of contact, and entertainment to, towards the world and everybody else, then it, it, it brings you a false sense of, it could bring you a false sense of love and a status that you possibly live. So with the mental health, I feel like a lot of people could possibly be putting a lot of strain on their self just on, on how they approach their relationships within people. So, you know, it's something serious, it's something that needs to be addressed, but you know, it definitely can be, you know, curved if we go ahead and, you know, just stay within, our, not just within our means, because these guys at this level are rich, but stay within our character. Just because you have it doesn't mean that you have to be the guy still, because everybody doesn't have that personality. 
And it seems like a lot of guys have been caught up in just being somebody who they're not more so than anything. And it's adding on to a lot of pressures as far as towards the mental. And it's a lot easier to say when you have someone there that's going to guide you and keep you away from dealing with that mental health. But like we've seen, Doc Rivers seems like (laughs) he has a lot going on. Recently just secretly divorced his wife and has a 30-year-old girlfriend. Looks like he was ready to get (laughs) to get back to. So is that also something that leads to how your players play if your coach isn't um, locked into basketball as much as he should be? That's funny. (laughs) (laughs) um, I I think it does. I mean, it's just extra stuff. It's just un... It's a time and a place for everything. And it's a trickle down effect from the head to the to the bottom. So when you have your guys, like as far as your coach, that their life is public as well. And you know, that 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 can go ahead and rub the players wrong or because they feel like they're more important. So I mean, kudos to them, they had their own situation, but I mean, on so many levels, it's just like, it's violation, man. You got all these people. Man, stay with people your age, boy. Like, <laughs> <Right? laughs> you got everybody trying to go ahead and be young, man. And everybody that's young trying to go ahead and be old. You know, go ahead and just stay in your place. Stay in your lane with your age and stop. Just just be cool who you are and where you at. And everything will be all right because... I, I do. I definitely think that that took away from from their 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 focus. You know, they treat them different. You know, the lifestyle within the players are different, especially if she's their age. She possibly could have friends. There's possibly that socialize. You know, like with other players. So a lot of those things can go ahead and add into you know how your teammate your team reacts to you. Mm-hmm. You know, if they understand and they see that you're doing some wild things. And let's keep it real, man. It's, if, if Doc Rivers is going to go ahead and defend Lou Williams in the situation, can you imagine some of the things that Lou Williams and the team probably have on Doc Rivers? It's a good point to bring up. I didn't even think that far into it, but probably. You know what I'm saying? Like, because if you exile somebody like that in, at, at this level in L.A. and you see that he has some extra things going on if he can secretly marry, I mean, these are the things that's made public. So when you go ahead and put two and two together like anything else, you know, I'm not here to create a story about anybody else's life, but as that pertaining to basketball, when you have a lot of the extra stuff going on, you know, it definitely affects your the, your performance with your job. But look at the way that they started off the season because the first headline that we saw as far as players leaving the bubble was Lou Williams going to Magic City for some lemon pepper wings. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so you can't really blame where they were heading because they were already off to a bad foot. Yeah, I agree with that, man. Like they were just, it it was just too many distractions. They were talented enough to go ahead and mask it. But when, when they ran against a team that that was organized, more importantly, that, that just took their punch in the mouth, you know, and said, yeah, we don't believe you guys. Once they ran into that wall and it was that, it showed everything just came out. So from a basketball standpoint, I've been a part of a lot of extra things and antics and everything else. So uh, I understand how it is and what it causes when you have just so much extra stuff going on. And and Clippers had too much going on to go ahead and be a, a, a championship contender team. And we saw the same thing with the Rockets, too, because even though the Rockets were already undersized, undermanned, you could argue. Daniel House still found a way to (laughs) sneak somebody into the bubble and completely ruin their chance with the Lakers, if they had a chance at all. 
uh, all of it. Like I, I've been a big fan of the bubble. I thought it would go ahead and expose a lot, not just basketball, but it would expose a lot of people, just a lot of not just basketball players, but a lot of people character because a lot of people like have bad intentions, not just the players and their motives and narratives to go ahead and be as corrupt. It just adds on to the players enticed to go ahead and break the rules. So I think the bubble was a, a, a good chance to go ahead and a lot of, get a lot of guys exposure who might not necessarily get a chance to play and show their professionalism. Um, and at the same time, it just showed with guys like Daniel House that, you know, like guys just they don't have no control and you got to be held accountable. Like it, it's, it's too much of that going on. And with everything that was going on in America with the COVID and how it, it, it was a good chance that if anybody tested positive in the bubble, that it could be shut down. Uh, I think it's just real selfish from any player or any person female or anybody involved to go ahead and just jeopardize that for the for the for the sickness of their own good and like you're talking about with players that don't really get to play another headline that shocked a lot of people was what michael porter said um following a couple games ago when he said that pretty much the nuggets need to give him the ball and everyone had to say that they felt like he should have kept that in the locker room. So what are your thoughts on just what Michael Porter had to say and how that changes his role on the Nuggets? Um, I don't know. Um, it's def- it was definitely said pre- prematurely. Um, I, I, I feel like everybody has a say, but there has to be a, a ladder when it comes to, like, within an organization, a successful organization. That's why you have captains and co-captains and they're not just there just for on the court. They're pretty much role models off the court as well. And as a rookie, I don't feel like you really have that, that status yet because there's just different, there's just so much things that you need to learn. You're a learning year. Your body is in a learning year. The, your your mental is in the learning year. It's questioning everything. So it's kind of taken away from your focus as well. So with Michael Porter, I think he, you know, I like that. He just displaying that he's just selfish. That, hey, look, he just wants things to be all about him. So kudos to the dudes in Denver for working through it. But at the same time, man, it's just, like, once you go ahead and have a guy that's that candid in these type of situations and saying, speaking only solely about him and it's the me, 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 believe him. But do you think he kind of has a point or a right to be? Because look at Michael Porter's situation. He's already had two back surgeries. He didn't really get a lot of college experience. He sat on the bench all last season. So now that they have an opportunity to just play basketball, and he played well during the regular season. He had a career high of, I think it was 37. And then he had this, um, he was averaging about 18. So for him to play the way that he was when Jamal Murray was hurt, and of course before Gary Harris, do you think that that kind of inflated his ego a little bit and made him feel like, all right, I have a place on this team and I can take over a leadership role when other people are down? I'm sure. Uh, of course that has a lot to do with it. I mean, it was success. I always thought that was fool's goal. You know, they have to go ahead and, like, they have a structure. They have a system. And I think more than anything, he should be thankful for the organization to be able to, for them to first be able to believe in him as far as the, coming into the league with the in, the history of injuries that he had, the lack of playing experience through college that he had. So for them to go ahead and take a chance on him, that was already bonus. Um, so outside of that, you know, he responded. He started, he played really well. But I mean, it was fool's gold. Everybody good when they fresh. You know, once you go ahead and start dealing with fatigue and travel, and then you're dealing with the, 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 the scouting portal of other teams, you know, that, that adds on to something way different. 
So I think what Michael Porter is probably definitely going to go ahead and struggle with is that he has to understand that there's a scouting report where it shows your weaknesses, and these guys are just as athletic and just as hungry and just as uh, determined to go ahead and be in that spot. And they feel like you're 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 fool. So the the least you talk, the least you can go ahead and remain cool. But the more you talk, the more you remain on people' radar. So you know, big props for him bouncing back. But you know, once Eric, you got they get healthy, you know, you had to go ahead and expect him to fall in line. Like you said, he bounced back from this one, but this is like third or fourth headline in his first year playing because he did have his comments on the virus and was not willing to bounce back from those. He was very adamant about it. So do you think for him it's more so just submitting to what Michael Malone has going on, just realizing his place as a rookie, or is it more so just him as a person showing that he might be a problem with years to come? Mm -hmm. I think I think it's good that he shows that that he's not afraid to speak his mind type mentality. But like within the history of basketball, when you have guys at this young age and who's just trying to be po 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 politically correct, I'm sorry, politically correct, and sports wise, within the young age, a man and tell pretty much people and influence people how to go about it. I think it puts a different type of pressure on you, unwanted pressure that you really, that's why you're a rookie and you have older guys that you don't want. So it, it, it definitely it definitely puts him in a situation where Coach Malone could go ahead and I just say, hey, look, we want to go ahead and just sit you or we can go ahead and feed into it. So more than anything, I, you have to go ahead and give credit to Coach Malone because he was able to work through a lot of the things that they were going through. Now jumping on over to a different C, your former teammate, Cy Lawson, <laughs> just got banned from the CBA for his comments on, I'm paraphrasing, but Chinese women being thick. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think just and it just shows you also um how sometimes you can get so comfortable with things or a little bit too comfortable um and just start saying whatever's on your mind so what in his situation what are your initial thoughts about ty lawson and what he said <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, i read that this morning man like <laughs> Honestly, I mean, that's my, that, that was my former teammate, man. And I want to, you know, I want to, I want to stand up for him as much as possible, but. Not after that. <laughs> Ty, Ty Lawson, really, bro. <laughs> like, seriously, come on, man. Like, like, come on, dude. Like, that's, I, I, I don't know, man. Like. You know, you can't tell a man how to live his life. But at the same time, if we're going off of what you show us, like, bowl you wallet. You know, like, it's it's crazy. Like, I don't want to, you know, he got a lot of stuff that's going on. Like, damn, my dog been banned. And <laughs> my dog about to be banned in three countries, bo. Pretty much so. Dang, he didn't, like, my dude, he didn't play that well in Europe. You feel me? Like, he just didn't, like, it's not that he was, he's not a good player, but he just didn't, he didn't want to go ahead and adjust to systems. And even though, yeah, he was definitely a better player than me, but, you know, he, he, he really wasn't too flexible within his mental. He wanted to live by his own laws his own rules and when you live my life like that you know it's consequences so i don't even know if he good money i'm sure somebody go ahead and take a chance on him in europe but that's definitely gonna go ahead and hurt my dude pockets um he definitely struggled in the nba within a couple issues so i he already got removed from that 
that hurt his pockets. China was a good move, you know, where he can go ahead and resurrect his career. Got banned from China, like <laughs> damn, bro, like damn, man, like, yeah, you ain't got no no check or nothing, man. Like this nigga got, I know, I know he caked up, man. Like you ain't got no check, like damn, man, who your big dog, boy? But it goes like, to show you, anybody can miss out on, op- on an opportunity because of foolishness. Because he did get a chance with the Wizards back in 17. Um, ended up leaving there to play with China for two years. So it's not even like he was just there for a year and just started wiling out. You've been there for two years. You know already how Chinese um, government is. You know how strict they are about their people and how protective they are of their culture. So it's not like you were just out here like, oh, I'm about to just do what I want to do. You understand that it's a completely different culture and what's accepted in America is probably not accepted in China. So man, he lucky you ain't locking him up, man. And they got Lyangelo Ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, man, what's up, man? I don't understand, man. Like these dudes, like I understand because I was doing some wild things too. You know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking that this day and age that the things that, you know, that we, we went through that I had to go through is I don't like to see young guys go through it. You know what I'm saying? So I always question who you listen to, who's your biggest source. So within Ty Lawson, you know, personally, like I, I know him a little bit. I don't know him like that, but it's, it's discouraging. Like, I, I worry about my dude. I worry about how it's going to affect him at the end of his career. Like, like he did some talas and, like, did some great things. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about coming from the D.C. area, playing at winning the national channel, championship at North Carolina, you know, setting all type of records, making it in the league. Go ahead. And at the time before his getting into the lottery with Denver. I think he got drafted by Minnesota, got traded to Denver. Then he, um, you know, he, he played decent, then whatever else. And then that's where I met him. The, the NBA strike came in. He he struggled to start whatever else, but he shook back. And then he was end up signing, like, I think at the time, like a $40, 50000000 million deal. You know, and big props to him, but it's still like, man, like after this, man, like, come on, Bo, are you still doing what you was doing 10 years ago? Yeah, and we talked about it's, it kind of takes away from the good things that you do, because when you see his name, the first thing you see is something negative. You don't see, well, Ty Lawson played a great game versus such and such. You see Ty Lawson is out here tooted up with Chinese women and just got banned from China. So just reminds you, some people need to (laughs) keep things to themselves and really just get into basketball, get your money, get out. I mean, like, for real, man. Like, I'm I'm disappointed in him. I'm worried about the dude. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, yeah, bro, like, you just wildin' still, man. Like, you... At the end of your career, because Ty Lawson, his, his number going to get retired in the Raptors. You know what I'm saying? Like, in so many, so many places. And you don't want that on your name, dude. You know what I'm saying? You you work for your name to go ahead and be held to a real high level. There's no need to go ahead and just mess it up. So my, my encouragement to him is to go ahead and just think about how you want to go ahead and be looked at the, at the end of your career. You know, you had fun with doing what you wanted to do. But now, hey, look, bro, just party. Like, the party over with it. Over with because you ain't no good at it. Unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> For real. But in other news, Maria Taylor has been making some headlines, to say the least. Um, first of which, she um, called out a older reporter for him criticizing uh, something she was wearing. And then in second headlines, people were talking about how she left Anthony Davis off of her all NBA team voting. So a lot of people were questioning her um, presence in the voting and if she should have any vote at all. 
So just what are your thoughts about Maria Taylor and just how she responded? Um, I heard about it. I read a little bit about it. I don't know too much about it. I just think, honestly, I just think too many people got an input on who should say what and this, that, whatever else. I mean, and at the end of the day, like I say, it's just taken away from the game. I don't, I think she, she didn't put, I think it was something with Doug Gottlieb as well that he put, I think he challenged her at a situation where she didn't put Anthony Davis or something in the first or all NBA teams. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, it sounds like it's an honest mistake. I don't, you know, I don't think she really, nobody could be that crazy. So I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say she, she that was just an honest mistake that she was probably cross out of some shit looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that she gets a little bit more backlash because she is a woman of color and because she is also involved in so many sports? Or is that just something that people just nah, want to because it's, it's, I think, it's that? I think everybody, want these people, everybody wants something to talk about. So just being a person of color just adds on to the narrative to give people, you know, to say what they want to go ahead and say. But Everybody going to be talked about and ridiculed and scrutinized in the public eye. That's just a part of it. So, uh, as far as her with the vote, I don't, I don't know her level of a basketball, but it seems like they want to, they respect her enough to, to put her on the committee of voting. I don't know who make that committee, cause, I mean, I want to see who can hoop. You know, well, we've I'm, seen I'm, voting. Um, I, well, what is the what, what is the criteria for the committee? I have no idea. Probably just um, we pick you. You're on. <laughs> nah. Well, you gotta like just to be on the committee to vote. Then you're gonna have to look up and see what's the what's the criteria, and then see if she really fits it, and see who doesn't. And then if you want to challenge everybody's background, then you're gonna to have to look at everybody's background, so but you can't go ahead the and. NBA, and she's played, so she does have a credentials in that. So you can't completely say, "All right, who is this random girl or this random woman?" She knows what she's talking about. So I think that she does have a stand, and she should have um, the right to vote on these things maybe somebody else could have had better uh stand against her but i do think that just because of who she is and how hard she's worked that she does deserve a place in the voting as well i'm not too familiar with her i I do some background i do some reading on her um at the same time i'm not like who needs to be on the committee i could say like i want to see like what 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 does the committee criteria consist of? What is the background? What is the history of it? How many how many voters are on the panel? So really can't speak on it until you just dig into it and get a little bit more information. You know, but if Skip Bayless is on the panel and guys like that, then you know, of course, you know, unfortunately it's a little bit lopsided because these guys seem like a little bit detached from the game at times. For sure, for sure. And I think we should go out on a high note. Bronny James just got <laughs> caught smoking weed on live. Who? Bronny James, LeBron 2.0. Man, this, why do why people call this dude Bronny? Man, look, I ain't calling nobody no Bronny. I hate even calling LeBron LeBron, even well, though that's his name. Too. <laughs> so I just call him Le- LeBron Jr. LeBron Jr. <laughs> I, got smoking weed online. I thought was smoking killer. Yep, they said he was smoking nuggets. <laughs> For real? Dang, yeah. man, never mind that, man. Who, Who is this weed man? <laughs> it was saying J.R. Smith. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That's funny. J.R. Smith selling Bronny Killer, yeah. Lil yeah. Junior. That's the talk um, of the town is should Bronny be scrutinized for doing it? And what's LeBron's punishment about to be? Man, I don't know, man. He just pretty much is saying, like, you know, I, that L.A. lifestyle had, I know it has a, a backlash to it. It's the glitz and the glamour. But for whenever people go out there, like, them kids just grow up weird, man. So, you know, it, it's it's normal with kids. They're probably doing right now. It's, uh, it's shocking that he's so boldly to go ahead and just announce it. So, you know, we all know LeBron and them be smoking killer, man. That's why his hair gone. <laughs> but do you think because... Mine is too, look. Well, y'all need to, you need to find Bronny. Send him a text after this. <laughs> he, I know he got the hook up, man. But you know, like on the real, it ain't, it, it ain't even cool, man. Like it, when I was growing up, you know, only the it was a certain amount, a type of person that was just doing that, a certain amount, a type of player that he was more like to really just, just straight street dude. You know what I'm saying? Like he was really out here. And he was doing it to go ahead and just be corrupt. Now it's kind of like the, the good kids who growing up within a good lifestyle are the kids who's corrupting all the other kids because they do have the money. They do have the resources to go ahead and have accessible to anything. So... <clears throat> So to see somebody like him, you know, uh, you worry about the the next the next wave because you know kids look up to him for whatever reason, you know, and for him to go ahead and be setting the panel like that is just ain't cool. And don't be coming out with no bullshit ass statement talking about that was a prop, man. Just take it and just just move from there, man. But it's 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 corny because. It's another person, example of somebody just thinking about they self. Because of who Bronny is and because LeBron is his dad, do you think that that makes a bigger headline? Because realistically, it's 16-year-olds that are getting caught smoking weed all the time. And of course, there's repercussions or there isn't, depending on who the uh, parents are, what they want to do with their kids. But because it's Bronny, do you think that that's why the headline is so surprising or so talked about? Yeah, I think it got a lot to do with him. You know, the spotlight, you know, it's on LeBron all the time, you know, and they they, they want to see it. Some people who, you know, admire him so much that they're looking for a flaw. And, you know, they, they're looking for something just to go ahead and talk about. It really ain't too much that kids could do. You never know when the video was recorded. You never know what was the motive behind it or how it go. It's just, yeah, it was wrong. You can't judge. But at the same time, you know, LeBron, like, you know, and everybody else, like, get off of this social media, man. We grew up with real gangsters, man. We ain't, we ain't never put our location nowhere. You you never seen us, so it's just a different wave on how everybody these how everybody living now. But we we live by that code and that rule that you don't get on no no wave or no letting people know your phone number where you live, where you at, where your smoke at, your kids know your kids or whatever else. It's crazy because for the longest people ain't even know I had a daughter. You know what I'm saying? People look at me like, for real, they be like, yo, man, like, that's your daughter? Yeah, I didn't know you had a daughter. You know, so that's how you're supposed to have it because you need people in your, your, your family business. I don't even know if people know I have a dad. <laughs> um, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but for in real. all seriousness, what do you think Bronny's punishment, if you're LeBron, what's Bronny's punishment? Man, whoop his ass. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, thinking like a week with Dwight Howard. I think that'll set him straight. I think it needs to be addressed. I think at that level, um, 
you know, once LeBron is able to, I think he need to probably just have a sit down with his with his kids. And I think they all probably need to go to rehab. Because <laughs> I don't know, man. Like a lot of that stuff be going on, man. It's it's natural for people to go through things and drink and abuse alcohol and drugs and everything else just as easy as it is for people to abuse money, cars, women, clothes, whatever else. So, you know, just having it, I think LeBron probably need to go ahead and check in the rehab. <laughs> nah, right. I'm just saying. Nah, right. I'm just playing. But nah, I mean, he just need to, he just need to address it, like try to get it, tighten it up. You know, regardless, you just don't, just stay off of social media, stay off this camera. If not, people like me going to talk about you. Yeah, and we know you got your thoughts on LeBron, Mr. Youngstown, Ohio. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, man, we feel a certain type of way about acting niggas anyway. So we always felt that way, you know, like that was always just like uh, the whole Ohio, that whole stretch is just like, there's real beef between cities and and zip codes and area codes, like it's really serious like that for real. Well, so we ain't never like Akron guys. So big props for LeBron, what he doing for the community and hoop, but we don't, we, don't, we ain't like at all. So just kind of thinking as an overarching statement, just what is your advice to young dudes in the NBA just maybe someone like Michael Porter who's early in their career and trying to have longevity in the NBA without um, having headlines overshadow what they do on the court. Um, nice. Um, get a mentor, a real mentor. I think the NBA is, I think this is it's time, you know, to implement like a mentor type system you know, like a lot of mentors definitely do it, you know, for no gain. There's mentors a lot that do it for no gain. But I think then they, they, they everybody needs a mentor. If they don't have a father, the mentor needs to be implemented with the to implement the father into the, the kids next success. Like make yourself aware of, you know, being successful, you know, and you have to look at it short term. So you have to have people that around you that's able to to get you to understand that aspect. Even though you are feeling good at any given time, you know, things can go wrong, you know. So you need to go ahead and plan and live like this, you know. And it's not that you tell them what to do. It's that you encourage them and give them a blueprint on how they go ahead and not be be successful, you know, or you so get with somebody that can, you know, encourage you to do the right thing. I'm not saying just a pastor. I'm not saying a, a uncle. I'm not saying a coach. I'm saying it's somebody who has, you know, like doesn't have your basketball interests. They have you as a person interest that gives you full control but encourage you to go ahead and be responsible with what you have. All right. That's fair enough. Some good advice. Hopefully some dudes take your advice or they'll end up bending over Chinese women and getting banned from the CBA. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? But thank you for talking to me. It's good hearing from you. You got some good points. And I'm not saying that because... I'm part of you, but <laughs> good advice. Good advice. Thanks again. Appreciate for your... you having me. Thank you. Anytime. Hey everybody get up. It's time to slam now. We got the real jam going down.